Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Pettis. Let's talk about localized prostate cancer treatment strategies and the reasoning behind them. Localized prostate cancer simply refers to a cancer that is not spread outside of the pelvis. Prostate cancer treatment generally falls into four categories, active surveillance, surgery, radiation, and hormonal therapy. Often a patient will have a combination of these. The choice of treatment is highly dependent upon the patient's risk category, age, and other medical problems, and of course, patient preference. Before considering any treatment, it's important to know what would happen if you didn't do anything at all until you died from the prostate cancer. This is called the natural history of the disease. No one ever advises doing nothing, but it's helpful to know what would happen if you just ignored it. We know from studies of large groups of prostate cancer patients that when prostate cancer is detected because of a rising PSA, known as clinical T1C, on average, patients will live eight years before they develop any symptoms of the disease like urinary obstruction, weight loss, or bone pain. It takes an additional five years before the cancer would become life-threatening. So we're talking about 13 years from diagnosis to death without doing anything, on average. But that's the problem. These are just averages, and no one patient is truly average in every single way. Everyone's different. So this natural history may be shorter or longer depending upon the patient and his cancer characteristics. The problem is trying to figure out who really needs to be treated and who doesn't. The technology is not quite there yet, but getting better every day. We now have a variety of sophisticated molecular genetic tests that can help us predict who's more likely to develop life-threatening disease. This is helpful, but it still only gives us odds. In the end, only a well-informed patient is able to confidently make these tricky decisions for himself. And unfortunately, there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Life expectancy is an important consideration in determining who needs aggressive treatment and who does not. We'll all die in due time. It's a fact of life that most of us would rather not discuss in too great a detail. We take into account lots of variables to get an overall gestalt of an individual patient. How old are they? How long did their parents live? How many medications are they on? Are there signs of heart disease, stroke, significant diabetic complications? The list goes on and on. Perhaps the most difficult thing to assess is a person's resilience. I think that a cancer diagnosis is like a bad car accident with injuries. No one is ever the same afterwards, and there are potentially long-lasting physical and psychological impairments to deal with. Low risk and very low risk prostate cancer are the most common categories. This is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because the patients will probably not die from their prostate cancer, whatever treatment strategy they choose, even if they decide not to do anything in the short term. It's bad because for the vast majority of these patients who decide to aggressively treat their cancers, they'd probably have been okay if they had decided to delay treatment for months or even years, but now have to deal with the side effects from treatment. For a huge subset of patients, active surveillance is a good strategy. Active surveillance is not the same thing as doing nothing for your cancer. It's a calculated risk that your prostate cancer is not spread and that you and your doctor will do something about it before it does. It's not for everyone, but for someone with low or very low risk prostate cancer who enjoys good health and an active sex life, it means postponing or even completely avoiding the urinary, bowel, and sexual side effects that are sometimes associated with prostate cancer treatment. Active surveillance makes even more sense in men who have a limited life expectancy. Why deal with treatment side effects for a disease that's unlikely to ever bother you? Studies have convincingly shown that delaying treatment is not associated with death or worse outcomes than if the person had undergone immediate treatment. Radical prostatectomy is the gold standard for prostate cancer treatment. Radical prostatectomy is an operation that aims at removing the cancer completely. We remove the prostate, the seminal vesicles, a small part of the bladder, and a small part of the urethra. In certain cases, we will also remove the pelvic lymph nodes, mostly depending upon the risk of lymph node involvement. There are two general approaches to radical prostatectomy, open, robotic. Both approaches have equivalent cure rates. Each has some minor advantages or disadvantages. Open surgery allows the surgeon to feel the gland and the cancer. Some surgeons feel that this is a big advantage, while others do not. The advantages of robotic surgery are a better view of the prostate anatomy, considerably less blood loss, and quicker recovery. The most important thing is that your surgeon uses his or her most successful and preferred approach.
The goals of treatment are the same regardless of the approach. First, remove all the cancer. Second, preserve as much urinary sphincter as possible to recover urinary control. And last, preserve the nerves for erections. The biggest advantage of surgery is that the cancer is excised and it can be completely assessed by the pathologist. As many as 15% of cancers will be upgraded. That means, for instance, that if you are diagnosed with a Gleason 3 plus 3 tumor based on biopsy, sometimes the final pathology based on examination of the entire prostate gland will be Gleason 3 plus 4 or higher. Fewer patients will be downgraded after radical prostatectomy. With surgery, the cancer can be truly staged. We can tell for sure if the cancer is confined to the prostate gland, if it has penetrated the capsule, or if it has invaded the seminal vesicles, or even the lymph nodes. This information can be used to predict the cancer will come back or if further treatment is necessary. There's nothing more reassuring than a report that the cancer was contained to the surgical specimen and is now harmlessly sitting somewhere in a lab. The downside is that as many as 10% of patients will have significant urine leakage after they have recovered, and even more will have erectile dysfunction. Getting a cancer diagnosis is a very scary and stressful experience. Fortunately, with most prostate cancers, you have an opportunity to calm down, weigh the pros and cons of several options. No matter what your initial reaction or bias is, it's very important to hear all the treatment options that would be appropriate for your cancer. In my very strong opinion, the patient who's most well-informed and goes into treatment with their eyes wide open will do the best and have the least regret should there be anything less than a perfect result. In prostate cancer, there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Each patient must be considered on his unique cancer characteristics, quality of life concerns, and other health problems. So each patient should explore all treatment options with his family and physicians.